With me, I have brought a letter from nature. Reading this, I can tell you that the nature is deeply distressed of what we humans have done all along the years. Allow me to share the message with you. Dear humans, I have been here for four and a half billion years, 22,500 times longer than you. I don't really need people, but people need me. When I thrive, you thrive. When I falter, you falter. But I have been here for eons. I have fed species greater than you, and I have starved species greater than you. My oceans, my soil, my flowing streams, they all can take you or leave you. How you choose to leave each day, whether you regard or disregard me, doesn't really matter to me, one way or the other. Your actions would determine your fate, not mine. I am nature. I will go on with or without your partnership. Now, understanding how nature feels, I want to tell you that I'm not here to give any mind-blowing speech or lecture. I'm here to remind on what we humans have done all along the years and how it affects every inhabitant as a concerned citizen of Earth and not as an expert. And also to share a solution, one that I believe we are overlooking. So to begin with, let us understand by how we got to this point. In the beginning, God created Adam and Eve. They both lived in a paradise and they were asked not to eat from the forbidden tree. But because of their curiousness and desire for knowledge beyond what they were given, despite being warned, they ate from the forbidden tree. And this act led to their expulsion from paradise and marked the beginning of humanity's insatiable quest for more. More power, more knowledge, more possession. From 2,000 years ago, we humans were hunters spread across the globe. We used our unique mind to adapt and survive. But as population grew, we started taming the wild and extracting more from the surface of Earth. Now we humans determine the nature's survival. The planet is under our control. And yet this newfound dominance have come at a cost. We have become totally out of balance with the nature. And unless we restore harmony, we risk dire consequences for all the inhabitants. As the saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility. We have evolved from harmony to dominance, but our responsibility has not evolved with us. Actually, the word homo sapiens means wise men. But are we humans really so wise? Smart, yes, smart for our own good. We have split the atom in two. We have made policies to protect the environment. We have built clever machines to navigate across the universe. But at the same time, the atoms we split created a nuclear warfare. Neglecting the policies, we continue to quench our thirst for greed. And in our quest to explore galaxies, we neglected the home that we have here now. So this is not wisdom. Wisdom is different. Jack Ma once said, smart people know what they want and wise people know what they don't want. Smart people be like, I want that, I want this. But wise people be like, Psh, this is not what I want. Human beings have become so greedy that they want everything. Everything on the earth, everything on the moon, and everything on the Mars. But we have to ask, is that necessary what we want? So if we were wise, we wouldn't be shocked to see storms stronger than ever before. We wouldn't be shocked to see more floods, more wildfires, more hurricanes, more carbons, more trees cut down at a record pace than ever before. We have increased the extinction rate of animals thousand times the normal rate. And if things go on like this, just as Seven Kuli said in 1992 Climate Summit, that I have dreamt seeing jungles full of wild animals, birds, and butterflies, but now I even wonder if they will exist for my children to see. We have turned the circle of life into our own personal conveyor belt. Why all this? You know, when we siblings used to fight, our mother used to tell a dialogue in Malayalam, which means we are given so much without lifting a finger. Actually, we all are given so much. We are given a planet which is not too close nor too far. The food, the water, the medicine, everything is provided and everything is literally connected and we are just like a family. And this is what we must recognize, that the real problem is not global warming or environmental destruction. The real problem is us. All the byproducts, all the symptoms, all because of us. So if the problem is us, the only solution got to be us. How do we redirect this? Let me suggest, 
If a farmer sees a tree is unhealthy, they don't look at the branches to diagnose it. They look at the roots. So just like the farmer, we must look at the roots, which is us, and not at the branches of governments, corporations, or politicians. In India, a person named Nama Gupta noticed cigarette butt littering everywhere. So he collected, used a safe organic formula to convert it into toys. An Indian designer made a study and beautiful tiles out of carbon. A person named Tusita made paper out of elephant's poop. Adam Curtis, a runner, turned his morning work into garbage pickups. And so far he collected 7,000 pounds. And the list are many, and these unsung heroes demonstrate endless possibilities for innovation. So my point is, if these individuals can spend their life saving Earth, why don't we spare some effort? Whether it's planting a sapling, or participating in an environmental activity, or simply just avoiding careless waste disposal. Because every action contributes to perfection of Mother Nature. I know it doesn't sound like a big deal, but guys, imagine. If a small virus can change the world in no time, why not we, the 8.1 billion? And if you still think that, this, that the disaster has grown beyond individual choices and still waiting for someone else to save the world, I must tell you that it is your footprint that turned into a sinkhole instead of a garden. It is you that call this destruction a progress. We must realize that the earth is only our home. We must globally warm our hearts and understand we are not apart from nature, we are part of nature. To save nature is to save us, to betray nature is to betray us. Because if we all don't work together, we all will be equally extinct. So if there is something that I want to tell you from all that I've said is this. Service to others is the rent that you pay for the room you have here on earth. So be the person who plant trees knowing he or she will never sit under its shade. It's never too late to do the right thing. Remember, it is only together that we can make it to the future. Thank you.